There, Jen. Am I the only one on so far? They're coming in now. Oh, okay. I was wondering, because usually we can, um, I was wondering if there was technical difficulties or something. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi. Good to see you, Bob Christman. Good to see you. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Tired. School is uh, school is definitely um, it's it's a lot this year. <laughs> it has been for three years. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. It's good to see you. How's it going? Hi, Drew. How you doing? Good. I think this might be everyone tonight. Um, the other Bob can't make it. Jen's got multiple things going on. She said she might try and jump in. And uh, Martha, unfortunately, has caught the uh, the bug, the virus. Oh no. It's terrible. Yeah, she seems like she's okay, but she, you know, she's just not feeling that well. So anyway, anyway um, we can start. We have roll. Uh, we do have a new member, uh, Cheryl Chamberlain. I think many of us know of her if we've had children in the school district or have uh, any association I know with DECA and a few of the other things and some of the some of the student projects and some of the good work that's done um, at the high school. Um, Cheryl, I don't know if you want to just introduce yourself to the group and just so you know, as an alternate, because not everyone is here, you actually get to vote tonight if we have uh, votable items. So. Um. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, you guys know who I am. I'm uh, a 20 year veteran with the Grand School District and I'm a uh, 20, also 20 plus year resident of Grand Island. My husband grew up here and um, I'm really excited to be a part of this. Uh, I think that I have much to give and I know that um, Mr. Christman can attest that um, I've done great work with um, local businesses, especially Casey's Cabana, um, who actually veered off of Casey's Corner and Casey's Concessions Counter, which I still run at the high school. Um, she's doing a great job running her own business. Uh, Gabby Bergstrom is going to be doing it solo this year, um, but she's outstanding. Um, also helping hybrid defense um, in the um, uh, the Grand Island Plaza. Uh, Derek um, Staubitz is uh, opening a karate and Krav Maga gym, and I helped him write his business plan, and he opened this year. Now with a lot of fanfare, but um, he's trying to build his clientele. He works with our schools too, so um, we're, you know, I'm helping small business as always, um, and excited to be a part of the board. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. So we've got, um, you know, depending on how much time or how we want to divvy up uh, the Vercel piece um, and how much discussion on that. There are a number of items on the agenda that were, um, and why can't I find it? Oh, there we go. Um, so let me, up here there we go so uh the first thing we never approved is our february minutes if you recall our march meeting was the presentation of uh the um 
of the market analysis by David Russell. Uh, last month, we ran into some vacations and quorum issues and people being available. Um, so uh, if I could have a motion to approve the uh, February minutes. I'll make a motion, this is Kristen. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Noes? Abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. So the second piece was really an information item. Um, I had uh, reached out to um, Eric Feeblecorn over at the chamber to make sure he had seen uh, the item. And I know I included it in the um, email I sent to everyone uh, yesterday. Um, really that the, the county has uh, determined to use some of their federal uh, CARES Act money for some economic development purposes. And one of their initiatives is to provide uh, facade grants for owner occupied, um, what I would characterize as main street retail businesses. So um, they, uh, I think if we, I can stop the share on this one. So it's a it's a program. That's not what I wanted. It's a program that the county had. They actually held a. Um, they held a webinar on it. Uh, earlier this week, which is why I wanted to make sure that the county had it um, and, and the chamber had it so they could make sure they could get it out to their membership. And I know, and speaking to Eric, they did distribute it, but I wanted to make sure everybody had it on, uh, on this group uh, in the event you know in particular um, a owner of a property that might want to take advantage of this. So um, as you can see, it's really for small businesses. Um, they want there's a gross income uh, limit. Uh, you got to have small, you know, not not that many employees. Although you know, some of these, this is this is could be a fairly large size business on, depending on the uh, facade. Um, obviously, exterior, permanent outdoor fixtures, compliance with ADA. Uh, they're definitely targeting minority women, uh, service disabled owned businesses. And they'd like to, um, you know, have the biggest bang for the buck if there's multiple uh, storefront owners uh, in the same stretch. So, you know, the impact is 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 more viewable, I think, and more impactful if you're doing it, um, you know, a block or several buildings on a particular block. Um, have just about a month in order to submit app um, applications. There's a uh, um, you know, a lot of uh, additional information on the uh, erie.gov uh, forward slash storefront site, but I just want to make sure everybody had this um, in, in the event you want to share this on your, uh, your social media and um, also um, to anyone that you know that might be able to take advantage of it. I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments on this. I have a question, David. Is this um, I see it says that must own or lease space at a physical location and would the um, plaza fall in under this as everybody leases a portion of that stretch yeah. of real estate and obviously the bank is, you know, exempt from applying for this, but right. um, have the other um tenants involved in, in that location been advised on this particular program or? That's a good, that's a good question. I also saw in the, the detail as a franchisee, I don't know if, if Mighty Taco fits into that uh, mm -hmm. realm within that right. plaza, but the plaza stuck out to me clear as day but as coming from the Versal report, you know, how can we utilize these, uh, these funds to, you know, you know increase the visibility and, all that positivity so it was good. I think if you have someone who leases a structure, they have to have as part of their lease agreement some kind of responsibility for 
uh, maintenance and uh, upkeep of the property. And I, I don't think that's the case, the particular case with a lot of um, the spaces in the in the interior of the plaza. Um, and so in that particular case, you would have to have a willing owner um, that would want to work with uh, each of the tenants on, um, on, on taking advantage and affecting this. Um, do they know about this to the extent they, you know, um, are part of the network of the chamber or have seen it on some other type of, uh, um, you know, broadcast? Um, you know, I think the county's done some done some advertising on this. Um, you know, I, I, I can't answer that specifically on each individual business, but I think it'd be a challenge for the for their applications, probably because how their lease is structured and how their relationship mm -hmm. is with the owner. You know, I'm thinking of this would be, um, you know, maybe maybe some spaces that are that are up and down the boulevard or up and down Whitehaven. They might be able to take advantage of it. Right. Yeah. Okay. You get that Dollar General in there too, and I can might confuse things as well. Oh right, I didn't think about them. I was. Yeah. Hmm. But certainly, I would think the mechanical, you know, shops and all that. I mean, there's a lot of businesses right. that just on the boulevard that would benefit, you know, even it's a good one. Yeah, I mean, you can get a grant up to $40,000 for renovation, so. Yeah, it can't be that. No, no. Dave, is this something that we could ask Rhonda to post about on the town's Facebook page? And my other thought was if we could get the, the dispatch to somehow um have a little article about it or mention of it yeah i'm not sure how to how to i've never really dealt with the dispatch um i, I don't think there's any reason why the town wouldn't put it on there um, um if they haven't if they haven't already i can send it over to Rhonda and and copy uh copy christian on it just to make sure that you know she knows it's it's kind of official i mean it's, i i don't i don't think it violates any uh any town facebook policy so it's it's been posted on Facebook sites and it also was in the dispatch two weeks ago, so they are on it. Um, and I know that the um, must owner lease space in a physical location, so I don't know if they're going to use the entire plaza as one physical location. I think it's individual businesses. That's the gist I got when I made a few phone calls, but I. Again, I could be wrong because I haven't applied, but um, I was looking into it for some other people. So it might be a little more lucrative for some of the smaller businesses in the plaza and, and other plazas um, on the island. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I'll, um, I'll forward this over to Rhonda then. I think that came out of this, so. Uh, the other thing was, I, I think it was an article on, can everyone see the high-speed internet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know this was something we had talked about several years ago when the town was looking at partnering with the school district on, on some type of community fiber setup. But it looks like, if we go down to the map. Was, yeah, right through the boulevard there. It looks like. It connects, tries to connect the public sites. And I don't know, I don't know if this is the library, you know, again, this isn't a, this isn't a two scale map. This isn't really Google, but um, you know, the county's serious about rolling this out and then working with not Spectrum, not Verizon, but some of those others that have popped up, Greenlight and a few of the other um, providers to piggyback off this system to offer some competition in the marketplace. I, I, I haven't gotten any, um, uh, any, any details on, uh, you know, what these, what these dots represent, right? I think, I think one of these in the middle may be town hall, but you know, who, who knows, who knows in, in particular, I don't know if one of those is Sidway, you know, I don't know, I don't know what this, this is, I don't know if that's Beaver Island at the bottom, I mean, I'm not sure what, um, you know, what some of this is connecting, but I think the idea is that the county fully plans to run this, run this onto the island, um, so just wanted to make sure everyone's aware of this is kind of a, kind of an information item and something that, that some people um, on this committee actually put some Put some time in, and I know the technology committee looked at this um, 
as well. Um, and I don't know if I know Christian said he was having some technical difficulties. I don't know if there's been any contact between the county and the town on on how this is going to be rolled out. But I think this is something that's going to start construction. Um, Are you guys uh, able to hear me? Yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I, I might leave and rejoin and see if it works. But those buildings are connecting all the government buildings. So that would be the water intake and water treatment plants, which are on the north and south end of the island, as well as the fire department, the library. So those are the uh, buildings that are on the map. Okay. So then the idea and the concept would be in between those connections, one of the private operators could come in and, and lease a portion of the bandwidth and maybe run additional lines or provide services to private companies on it, if I think I understand this correctly. Anyway, something to keep an eye on. Questions, concerns? Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, I'm trying to, as I sit at my desk and stuff rolls across, I'm trying to make a pile. Martha and I were talking earlier, you know, we're just gonna have a pile of some information items as we come out of this. And we start thinking about kind of what the next initiatives are. Um, you know, I know we've got a whole bunch of stuff associated with, uh, with the market analysis and it's kind of like some of the stuff and, you know, I guess we can, we can probably get right into that right now. Um, you know, some of that stuff, is a little project specific, like, you know, get, get the get the Radisson to redevelop into something better, right? Um, but, um, let's see here, there we go. So what I thought we could probably do, because I don't think we had any kind of debrief or, um, you know, any real conversation about which of the nine were, feasible um, for us, maybe subcommittee route, maybe in conjunction with another committee, um, which of these may have, uh, um, you know, struck the, any of the town board members as something that's, that's warranted. Um, some of these maybe are a lot more long-term than, uh, than actionable. Um, I, I will say, and I know Christian's been copied on some of it, um, we're working through and helping to get uh, um, the paperwork done so the town could get reimbursed for the half of the half of the study from that state grant. So hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll be able to close that process out. But Martha and I have been reviewing things, um, you know, on behalf of Christian and, um, and, and the supervisor. Um, just to just to make sure that uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, get lost in the in the state system, but you know real quickly why don't why don't we just go through these as a refresher? I think everybody has a copy of this. Maybe I know it was up on the it was up on the uh, the town website. I think it's still in there. It's probably just down mm -hmm. quite a bit um, from a download standpoint. It's a pretty sizable document. If if somebody doesn't have it. Um, you know, let me know and we can uh, make sure that uh, we get the we get the link from the uh, town page. I know it's on, it's actually on the EDAB page. If you go to um, go to the town website and you look up our individual page that's up there. Um, so there, like I said, there were nine recommended actions that, that uh, came out of the market analysis. And one of them had to do with specific master plan for town center. Um, and obviously this is urban design, uh, transportation, um, infill, some of the regulatory things. And I know we have at least Rivertown as a, uh, as a major project that's going to implement some of these things, but there are other parcels in there and there are other investments that'll take place over the, over the corresponding years. I had included um, a state CFA uh, solicitation from the Department of State, which listed a number of program areas that communities have accessed to implement some of these uh, some of these things. So there are there are grant dollars uh, from the state to help with um, you know area plans, town center plans, zoning. So this would have to be something that uh, is generated 
um, from the town board. I know that when Pete was our liaison, he constantly talked about wanting to tackle design and, and zoning and really get that tightened up in the in the town center. And I'm not sure exactly where that sits, but there are opportunities to kind of affect this and, and kind of see. I think I think this one, and you know, at least in my opinion, is uh, is somewhat doable because there are other resources out there, and I think there's. Uh, at least, at least I know we have one town board member is kind of interested in it. But let me let me go through these before we spend a lot of time on each one. Uh, oops. Uh, action item two. I don't know. Oh, there we go. So leverage new investments to fund priority projects. This is basically saying that you know once once you you know have these major uh, developments um, like town center redevelopment or what would happen at, uh, you know, on East River, or, you know, Whitehaven. Um, there's different financing mechanisms to, uh, to assist that. I think this is, this is more an implementation step uh, once we've identified uh, particular projects. Um, action three, I think this goes to planning site zoning um, and is obviously something that would have to, uh, um, uh, be effective through the town board as they have the uh, the last say in in approving developments and approving standards. I don't uh, I don't disagree with what some of the recommendations are uh, out of this. I think there's um, while there's definitely a demand and a and a want for you know new single family homes in the community. Um, I know there's a, there's a trade-off between, uh, you know, for some level of affordability and some of the other amenities, but um, I think when you look at some of the more established neighborhoods and especially the stock that's, um, you know, on some of the, some of the main thoroughfares and around the edge of the island, the, the character is a little bit different than, than what's being created by some of the housing developers. Uh, action four would be to formalize kind of what we do. I think there, I've, I've been on this board long enough that there was uh, some activity um, around the potential of seeking some grant money from the state to actually uh, hire somebody to, to kind of do this on a, on a daily basis, and whether it was part-time or full-time as well as create, you know, we would become an actual official uh, board versus an advisory uh, committee. Um, you know, just some, just some thoughts here. Um, you know, there's, we are, I think, limited by the fact that we are all volunteers. Um, and I think we can, we can tackle and establish a couple things a year, but, um, you know, I think, uh, there is a, there is a capacity limit to uh, to what we can what we can tackle and work on collectively. Uh, action five is is really to you know build community brand and integrate into marketing. I think this is a would be a fairly um, detailed and um, worthwhile uh, thing to do. It would it would require at least one entity to have some um, legitimacy on assembling and bringing each of these entities to the table to affect, you know, again, one, one brand, one message. Um, again, I think this would have to come with some, uh, some level of, of political will and leadership on it. And I think if you recall, you know, that was kind of three, three particular different brands um, for the island. Um, and I think all of them are, are government. And I think there's, there's different, uh, um, different logos or slogans for some of the other, some of the other uh, communities too. Um, this was really targeting some key parcels um, and trying to affect uh, some different activity and some, some different development that would fit more into uh, what we're trying to achieve or lacking uh, from, a, from an ecotourism and a, and a, and a community service uh, commercial aspect. Um, you know, this, I think this involves really, you know, direct contact uh, and input from the real estate community, uh, as well as, um, uh, you know, interfacing with 
um, allowable uses on it. Um, I think in, a, in some sense, I think this is happening. Um, we've seen some parcels, some, some rather large parcels uh, um, purchased by, um, I'm, I'm missing the uh, organization now. I think Roger would probably know and a few of you. Western, might Western New York Land Conservancy. Right, yeah, they, yeah, they purchased some and, and I think this is something that I know um, there's some interest in. Um, I don't know who's necessarily coordinating this. I don't know if this would be a, more or less something that would be, uh, you know, in conjunction with long range planning and maybe the, uh, you know, conservation committee. But, um, you know, this is obviously something that's kind of happening now. And, and maybe there's some additional parcels or, or, or uh, sections of the island that, that can use this. I think there might be some like zoning implications there too. Yeah, I mean, potentially, um, you know, tip, when these are when these are purchased by conservancy, they usually become forever, forever wild. You know, I think there's might be some levels of passive recreation that's allowed on some of these um, in the future. But, you know, for the most part, um, you know, I know there's been proposals to purchase commercial properties or things that are zoned, um, you know, for some level of commercial or warehouse or retail um, and, and leave it as a, uh, as a kind of forever wild type of space. So uh, this Dave, one. Dave, uh, just going back to seven, one opportunity we have is that the Land Conservancy has uh, purchased the Ornithological Society's 40 acres, which is just behind my house here. So I think that has, and I think they plan to put trails and mm -hmm. that kind of thing through there. So it's in terms of opportunities, I think that is a big opportunity. Yeah, and I think where the, you know, maybe where the, the positive effect comes is make sure that's integrated into the other trails networks and some of those recreation opportunities that are, that are developed on the island. Mm -hmm. This one, <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if you followed it, but you know the town's um, having a. Uh, I don't know if it's in court, but um, there's issues at, or there were issues at River Oaks uh, Marina. So I mean, this is kind of uh, the consultant said, "Look, there's some out. You have you have three or four assets there um, at the at East River and White Haven. Um, you know." Try and try and figure out a way to to bring the partners together, or you know, engage some some out of some out of town folks that might want to look at it and completely uh, redevelop it. I think this might be something that maybe as we continue to come out of COVID and some of this activity and, and leisure starts to uh, travel starts to pick back up. Um, this is in and of itself a major, you know, a major project. And typically these are the types of things that you have some level of paid staff working on on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And then the indoor amateur sports complex. Um, you know, I think there's been different proposals over the years, public, somewhat private. Um, they gave a, an example of a complex in Victor um, and that there is an opportunity to use this to attract additional folks um, onto the island. So, I don't know, Drew's got his hand up. Is that something the town could do like a, um, an RFP for? If they were serious about something like that, but you would have to have the town owning land to be able to pursue that venture, right? Yeah, so that would be that would be the that would be one method, right? So the town would own a piece of property and you've seen this in in some communities in western New York that have um, you know large um, large parks. I'm thinking Hamburg as an example was probably recent. They were looking at ice rinks specifically 
but you know they had they had unused or, or open space as part of a larger recreation complex and they were they were looking to seek to do this i mean these are not old um the uh the facility that's kind of in the picture there with the turf and kind of open clear span um you know they're not that much to operate per se um especially if they were on a town-owned piece of property because you know then you have different tax advantages um but um you know, they're once, especially if you start introducing ice and things like that into it, then it gets really expensive. But this would be something that would be, again, a, a specific project. Um, you know, probably what would need to happen is there are some folks that have kind of talked about doing this. Um, and for a variety of reasons, they've, uh, uh, those ventures have, uh, have, falling apart and I think we would need to understand some of the particulars on that um, you know there might be one there might be current town board members or past town board members that kind of understand the lay of the land on that thing but again I, this would be something that um, you know would would have to be um, you know something I think that uh, the, the, the town was was really looking forward to uh, trying to encourage you know, the mention here is, and again, it probably makes sense because it would be off the throughway near the center of town, depending on what ultimately happens with uh, the former Fantasy Island property. I mean, there's some, there's some property and some land there. Um, but, you know, maybe this, this might be a little bit of a longer play, but if this was something we wanted to, um, you know, spend some time on or that, um, you know, we could set up, we can set up a, a Maybe we can talk to some folks that might have some intelligence on on how this would work. Yeah, uh, I, I I just know from our recent you know me, our previous meetings that uh, the just a need of a community center for folks to go to and families and and things like that. It is definitely a need on the island. You know, you're, if you have a large gathering, and you know, I think that the report showed an example of something that could um, benefit both the direct community and, and also bring in um, foot traffic and business. But uh, from our previous discussions as a, as a board, you know, just saying, uh, and I'm a new father of a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So I, I'm starting to find out where do I take my kids in the winter and got to go to the bowling alley again. You know, it's not too many places really on the Grand Island to, 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 uh, to take advantage of like that. Yeah. Vercel's point too was that, a lot of this fits in with ecotourism. When you have people here on the island and you want them to stay for a few days, there's got to be places for their kids to uh, recreate. And uh, particularly here in the in inclement weather, uh, if we're really going to do ecotourism, that was one of Dave's, Dave's points. Uh, yeah, I like that too, Roger. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, you know, there isn't, and I think his point, there really isn't one of these in the North Towns. I do know that they've there's one there's something in the Sears building at the Summit Park Mall. And I I don't know how big it is or how effective it is. I do know there are some I've got some friends in Lewiston that take their kids there for baseball. So um you know, I don't know how that changes the market. I don't know what that would mean in terms of uh you know, our ability to attract enough to make this operationally on some level. I mean, typically these types of facilities, um, unless they are really programmed, I'm thinking Salins out in Easter yeah, Rock. I was that thinking one, that too, yeah. Yeah, that one, that one's been around a while and it's established and, um, you know, that's a private one. Um, but sometimes to put, when you start getting into community space and things like that, you tend to get into, uh, you know, town, some level of town tax support on these things. And I do know that's been a debate over the years at the town board. There hasn't been, and, you know, the community's kind of debated it. And I don't, you know, I'm not sure exactly, uh, you know, the particulars on it. Um, but, you know, there was always uh, discussions about you know the plaza 
the old cannon space, all kinds of stuff for community center slash indoor recreation, indoor stuff. So, you know, I think this one's kind of, this one could get political pretty quick on things. So. I, think, uh, I think too that, you know, Niagara Falls is currently looking at the same thing, you know, with an outdoor amphitheater in the summer, um, a water park up there. I don't know if it's something, you know, that, the Seneca Gaming Corporation is looking to do to bring other, you know, it's, it's definitely something that's being talked of within the Niagara Falls community. In the, in, you know, by the, with the, um, to interject the school's perspective um, with the new athletic fields that we have behind the school, they're extremely well used at this point. And the, I don't think the district was prepared um, for the onslaught. I mean, just this past week, we hosted Little League because Vets Park was um, too wet for Little League. So um, you're looking at something that will be used by everyone. Um, and it's something definitely to think about. Um, they, didn't, they didn't think that there would be such an influx of outside organizations wanting to use the high school facilities. So that's one thing. Um, it, it could be a real cash cow if, you know, if, if it was done right, but you're, you're putting education in charge of marketing and, and, and event planning. So um, it's definitely, definitely something to think about. Would the rec department be in charge of, you know, would Joe Manager be in charge of this facility? Would it be, you know, an, an outside agency? Those are, are a lot of considerations, just speaking from a school perspective. Yeah, I would think the school. We definitely want the school to be a user of it, right? Um, to the extent they would need some additional space. I know that's been the concept. hasn't really, It hasn't gone anywhere recently, but there was a talk of an indoor field house facility, um, or it by the North Town Center. Use. Yeah, um, they're, yeah. they're always looking for gym space. As a matter of fact, that's the crux of community ed right now is not having enough gym, gym space for the community to come in and use because all of the high school um, and middle school teens use all of the facilities. So um, community ed is, is struggling to get gym space. So, and, and, and you know, that would be, actually be used by even community ed and the rec department, I would think as well. Yeah. I don't know if the, uh, uh, the committee realizes how many pieces of property the school district owns in the town. There are a good number of properties all over Grand Island that are owned by the school district. And at one time, the, uh, the school board was entertaining a proposal for an indoor sports center, including soccer and hockey that would be located near the welcome center and selling the piece of property to a, a private developer. But the group that was involved in that never could raise the capital to be able to uh, make it a reality. Uh, but I, I know that there's always been a willingness of the school board to, uh, to uh, use the property for a good reason uh, to benefit the, the students and the community in, in general. Yeah, Bob, I think I, I recall, I recall that. And again, I, as I mentioned, once you start introducing ice pads, the, the operational costs and just the cost of construction, just, I don't want to say it at least doubles, but it, it, it goes up considerably to the point where it doesn't make the project feasible. I mean, most, most new ice facilities that have to be built, unless they are municipal subsidized, have to be four to six pads in order to really make it work um, on, a, on, a, on an economic basis. I've talked to some folks that looked at, that looked at doing this out um, kind of cheek to Wagga, West Seneca um, years ago. And if anything, they've become more expensive to operate, not, not less expensive. But I definitely, but Bob, I agree with you. I think to the extent that this could be a partnership between the town um, the school district, and then have some type of, you know, private operator that can help bring in and, and fill up those other time slots um, to make it to make it financially viable makes a lot of yeah. sense. You, you think about the school district only owning the property around each of the buildings, but there are probably at least 20 other properties on Grand Island all over the island that are owned by the school district. How they acquired them, I have no idea. They were all acquired before I came and that was a, a number of years ago. 
but there, there's a significant number that are available uh, for, for use. Christian, did um, I know you were at the presentation and Tom was as well. I don't know if anybody else has really looked at this or the town boards kind of looked at it to say, okay, there's there's a couple things here that fit into what what some of the individual town board members are are looking to accomplish or that makes sense. Um, I, you know, I'm trying to figure out where where we go to. I mean, maybe we talk to long range planning and figure out kind of what fits into what's going on over there, and then you know, um, you know figure out a way to to spend some time and assisting to move that stuff forward. Yeah, so I, I briefly spoke about it, you know, with Tom and a few of the town board members, and it, we all are on the same consensus that it's all great information, and we really agree with the majority of it. And I kind of mentioned to Tom, so now what? And you kind of hit the nail on the head. We think that we should pitch this to the Long Range Planning Committee. And they, I mean, we feel that they would come up or kind of come up with a plan, you know, to <clears throat> work in parallel with this presentation. And I, I actually have been reached out from a few uh, residents and citizens of Grand Island that actually would love a copy of it. But um, I know Tech Advisory, um, I'm on the Tech Advisory Board. We touched uh, a little bit of this because they were actually present for the presentation as well, the head of the Tech Advisory Board. But um, outside of that, I don't have anything else. I don't know if Tom <clears throat> has been working, you know, with, you know, other boards, you know, zoning board, planning board. But uh, I know we did discuss, Tom and myself, that we really think, you know, that long range planning can uh, work some wonders with this. Okay. Uh, Mar is Martha, Martha's on long range planning, right? I'm not sure. I'm not their liaison. And sadly, she's yeah. Out sick today. Yeah, I think Martha and Mary. Okay. So kind of maybe as an action item, um, you know, with everybody's, with everybody's comments here, I'll talk to, I'll talk to Martha and Mary um, and kind of see, you know, maybe, maybe between now and our next meeting, we could sit down and maybe with, uh, with Jim Sharp and a, maybe a couple other members of their committee and kind of pull this out and say, hey, you know, what, what fit? And because I know a number of them were there for the presentation too. And I think, you know, several of them got excited over a few of these recommendations. So we should, uh, we should figure out kind of where the, uh, where the enthusiasm is and, and maybe leverage that. Dave, Dave, I believe that Jen Pusatier is our, Agreed to be our liaison. Oh, is it Jen? Okay. Uh, our representative to the long range. I think um, it would be great based on, and it sounds like that's what um, Dave, you're saying, to have, yeah. a, to have a joint meeting with the long range planning, okay. uh, maybe EDAB and the town board to... Um, I do think there's been a lot of good reception to the to all of these action items, but we don't right. have the, you know we don't have the bandwidth to tackle them all at once, but to see where the sort of like the top priorities are and decide okay. sort of how to how to move forward. Yeah, but, Jen, yeah, Jen sent a, a note tonight. Um, yeah, thanks for the reminder that she's our she's our long range and suggested, you know, Sharp had, had mentioned, um, you know, going over this market analysis with the committee. So why don't we try and coordinate that um, and, and see where that goes. Um, and, you know, Kristen had brought up how, how we move forward um, and looking at some of the findings from the best practices from the other communities. The, the number one was they have either a full-time or a part-time economic development um, staff person. Um, years ago, we talked about that as there were there were grants available to uh, fund some uh, economic development mm -hmm. person for like the first year or two, and then after that we would uh, be responsible for the salary um, at that time. That was, that was the grant that was there. Um, I don't know how you feel about, you know, revisiting that or if we just, um, 
obviously we meet with the board like you just mentioned, but do we uh, throw that on the table too and, and see what they think about revisiting that, maybe talk to the grant writers and see if there's still something out there. Mm -hmm. It might be part of, it might've been part of the smart growth program. Yeah, I thought it was in Department of State. Um, yeah, I think I think it was in there, but um, I definitely think that's something. And and I recall that because right, I was on the board when we were looking at that, and Bernie came in and, and right. said, we did the grant application because in the city of Tonawanda, yes, take yeah. advantage of it. And we we're going to pattern it after what they did, right? right? So I think that I think that's you know that's one of the ones on here um, that is actionable if there's you know if there's the will or the the funding. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of take care of that. But uh, yeah, that's definitely something I think we should talk about with long range planning and see how that fits in with with what they're thinking about. Yeah, what, yeah. I, what I heard, whoops, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Roger. Well, what I heard Vercel say was that having somebody, a planner of some sort, an economic development planner is key to the success of uh, actually carrying some of these action items out I, I totally agree. I just, we can't do it on a volunteer basis. And I, I guess I'm, I feel like if we communicate with long range and with the town board, we, we need to persuade or we need to together uh, see if we can't come to a consensus that that's probably a top priority for this town. Because otherwise I think we're just gonna do this stuff willy nilly, which is, um, so that's that's just my comment. Yeah, uh, I think I'm we concerned. really need somebody working on this every day. Yeah, yeah think, that was that was my uh, I, I like that suggestion probably the most out of the report. You know, you need you need someone in there, you know, um, breaking down silos, working on this continuously, great, uh, gaining traction, you know, making um, relationships with community members and things like that. So I, I agree with, with that as well. Yeah, Roger, you echoed what I was going to say as well. And I think just like with the slide that we have up there right now, the, the amateur sports complex, um, and this is just sort of reiterating what everybody seems to be saying, which is like, in order to make some of these other things happen, you need that dedicated person there to be able to make some of these other items happen. Like if we are going to pursue some type of like potentially public private partnership for a sports complex. That's not something that our volunteer board is really probably gonna have the capacity to, to do, but a, a dedicated person could do it. I want to, to ask Dave. Uh, David, I know out in, so William, Williamsville, Vercel was your consultant. He came up with a lot of ideas then how did you carry that forward in Williamsville? Well, I mean, we've got success story. We've got we've got dedicated staff on multiple levels, right? I mean, we have a. I mean, the time and again, you're talking about a scale here. So Amherst, in, in total, is about 130,000 people, right? And they've always had a. They've always they've always put resources in a dedicated planning and engineering staff along with um you know a lot of building staff and and then obviously you have the resources at my agency at the ida too so there's always been a, a collaboration along the fronts to, to kind of pick off what's what's doable and and how we need to approach things um but again i think it's 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 all about it's all about setting priorities, right? I think we need to we need to figure out what, what what what's the one or two things we need to keep moving forward, and then when those are done, we get to the next two and and that kind of stuff. But you know, I, I think everybody echoes here, and you know, what we'll see, you know, what happens from a from a budget and a political standpoint, um, and and if we can get some consensus on the two committees to to make a to make a, an argument and a justification without. Without having somebody who's who's you know full or part time focus is on achieving you know economic development or tourism objectives, you know there's only there's only so much we can do, um, you know in our in our volunteer capacity. 
I guess I wanted to ask Chris, uh, what the, has the town board discussed this or th that option of hiring a person and is it, has it gotten some traction or what is it that the board feels we need to do? Um, in transparency, we have not discussed since this, this uh, presentation, the hiring of a uh, dedicated person in, the, in that role. So uh, I can take an action item and bring this up and kind of get a poll and the uh, and see where everybody uh, stands for hiring somebody. I know it, it's going to be a tough pitch. I know there's a lot of positions that we're also trying to fill as well. I know you know an IT management role. Um, there's a couple other positions that we're we're attempting to fill. So, but I mean I, I do think this is, for lack of better words, dire. Uh, this is the future of Grand Island. I mean, this is the Economic Development Advisory Board, right? So, yeah, I mean, I guess um, probably in a general sense, um, you know, it would be, you know, it's just just how you pull it, right? Well, should we hire somebody to do this? And it's kind of like the first thing is, well, I don't know where we before we find out money for it, but I, I do think right. we could probably talk to. Um, and I don't know who the town's using now for grant writers, but there have been programs in the past specifically that would at least subsidize it initially um, and take a look at what kind of the, the strings that are attached on it. Are, they, are you allowed to have it more as a pilot basis? So if it doesn't work out, then the town's really not on the hook in year three or four, or you know, maybe, maybe it gets to the point where the value seen um, and having that person that, you know, the money is then found to kind of continue it. And I think that's probably ultimately what happens. I do. Right. Um, I mean, I don't think we can, we're not going to be able to do anything out of our uh, $9,998 a year or whatever <laughs> that we have as a board. So, um, but, you know, there, there might be, uh, you know, there might be something if we can get some consensus on um, which one was it? Uh, I think this one, I think this one's doable. And I think it's important that the town kind of takes a look at, you know, how do we, how do we, um, uh, you know, how do, how do we present ourselves to the outside world? And do mm -hmm. we have, does each, does each department have its own logo tagline? Um, you know, how are we, how are we branding ourselves? Um, especially to folks that do come and bike and shop and, um kayak and stuff it's like kind of what you know what what's our theme over here and what are we trying to present ourselves as I guess right. actually, uh, myself was the you know the individual having a sole individual or whatever driving it and then having the brand you know because you think you would hire that person they would work on developing that brand with whoever the panel or cohort would be for that but yeah those are definitely two good things there Right. I, find, um, I find typically what we, what you have to do with this is you have to, and I, and I hate to say this, but you know, um, you gotta, you gotta bring a consultant on it. You gotta have somebody come in that's going to do an overall brand evaluation. Um, you know, that's going to inventory everything that you're doing and then, uh, you know, take a look at, at your, at your plans, your documents, uh, you know, community uh, thoughts and, and develop the brand and that would be used across, you know, all departments and all, all town-wide efforts. I think that's, that's probably what needs to happen. And I, you know, I don't have a, I don't have an idea on what that would cost, but um, that's probably the start. Let, let me throw out an open-ended question. What, what would you, how would you assess the resident support for economic development on Grand Island? You're being because by we're talking about you're by the community. Uh, yeah. Depends you if you live there, behind it, right? Are the residents overwhelmingly? In I didn't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> That's okay. We'll say it. We'll say it. Somebody can yell at me if they want to. I'm sorry, Bob. Well, I, I just asked the question because we we talk about. Uh, hiring an individual to, to lead this effort, which I absolutely think would be necessary. At the same time, I have to ask the question because it's maybe I'm hanging around with the wrong people, but the, there's, a, there's a lot of negativity towards any kind of economic growth. Just leave us alone. Let us be what we are. 
And, and I wonder what your sense of that is as a committee member in general. I mean, I can speak to it a little bit, um, just off the top of my head. I feel like that the, the charged word is development. And I think people have different ideas of what is meant when they hear the term development. Um, and I think, at least for myself, I don't think of economic development as just being like building more housing developments. I think economic development is more of the overall health of the island's economy. And, you know, and also based on like what we've been saying here, it's sort of like our identity at, as an island and what we want to be. So I guess, uh, Bob, I don't know if this gets to your point, but I think of development and just in broader terms than just building well, more it, housing. It, it gets to the point, but I would say to you, if you went up to a resident on the street and said, what is your definition of economic development? Do you think their answer would be close to what you said or what you originally thought it may have mistakenly been thought of. Well, I, agree. I think they think of it as growth. They I, think agree. Of it I agree with growth. Kristen's point. At those uh, meetings when we were developing the uh, town plan, there were, there were questions asked about what kind of development. It seemed the ecotourism thing was the most, uh, I don't know if we'd say enthusiastically embraced, but it was more benign. It wasn't seen as somehow some damaging the character of the island. It was consistent with the green space, all of the natural uh, space that we have here. And so I, th I think that's an easier sell. I think the other one would be the town center. Good grief, I, uh, I, I was no great fan of twin fares, but sometimes when you have to go grab a piece of a pair of pants or a shirt, you, you say to yourself, why in the hell do I have to leave the island to go find some clothing, or I'm standing in the uh, line at Tops and people are pissing and moaning, uh, excuse me, are complaining about the uh, long lines, lack of cashiers, et cetera, et cetera. And I say, well, do you think we need an Aldi's or some other kind of uh, facility here? And everybody says, yes, we do. And so I think if you think of shops along the town center that uh, might serve the public, I think, I think that might be embraced. Um, I, and I think, uh, you know, the light industry, as long as it's where it's been along the throughway, is pretty benign as well. But I agree with Kristen, once you talk about more and more housing and so forth and so on, uh, people begin to question how does that affect our quality of life and our tax revenue? Does it bring that much um, From a new perspective, Roger and Bob, um, in picking up on that, if you follow social media, the the, you can't listen to the complaining on social media about the, 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 literally that's all they talk about is development of apartment buildings, development of homes. They are up in arms about it, but these are, it's a small majority of people who are complaining. Our existing business needs our help. And I know that, the, that Eric Feeblecorn in the chamber, he works tirelessly. He's fraught with not enough people, not enough businesses wanting to buy into the chamber. Um, and that, that, that development, that piece is huge for travel and tourism um, because I teach a, a, a Niagara University course on travel and tourism. And we have to have what's different than everybody else. And we just don't have that. Um, you know, and, and all these ideas are great. And I, I'm really learning a lot tonight about, you know, what, what happens behind the scenes. Um, but the, the rumor in the high school is we're gonna get a Starbucks. And when I tell the kids, we don't have the traffic for a Starbucks, they don't believe me, but it's, it's all to, you know, people want and want and want and more and more and more, but we have to really start really thinking about our existing business and how we can help promote them so they're more successful. I mean, I just helped somebody build a business and he's, you know, he's struggling. Um, so we, I, 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 that's just my, my two cents, but I'm picking up what, what um, Bob and Roger are saying as well. Right, and, and years ago before we did the comprehensive plan and when we had the meetings with the community, 
it was there was a lot of positive feedback about recreation, more recreation on Grand Island and and more retail and and that's what they were looking for. So as far as development goes, I, it sounds like, you know, with recreation comes ecotourism and, you know, more retail. So so all of that kind of goes together. And yeah, there are the people that don't want any more development from a resident standpoint or you know, more of an industrial standpoint, but um, I, they certainly do want to see more more recreation and, and retail, which is what our, our comprehensive pan, plan ended up um, talking about and, and saying those should be our priorities. Yeah, just, publicity, is, publicity is a big thing too. Um, I know they did an article on ecotourism um, in the dispatch and really turned a lot of people on to what Grand Island offers. So that is now the buzzword, um, talking to Jeff Green, who's on the um, environmental uh, advisory board. The, he, he said, oh, I, I really, we're really hoping about ecotourism kind of starts blowing up. So I think we do a lot with ecotourism already. Um, it's just a buzzword. And I think promoting existing what we have, you know, paddles up and, and you know, in the half marathon ran this past weekend along the waterfront. I mean, we have a lot of good things to offer. We just got to keep promoting them. Yeah. And I think that our recreation department could use a hand in, in, in promoting that. I mean, they organize all these, but, you know, they really needed help in marketing those events as well. So and part of our budget is, or most of our budget, if not all of it, is for marketing. So maybe somehow we can we can assist that way in, in trying to market some of this as well. So we'll see. For sure. <laughs> well, okay. Um, so I think we got you know a couple couple paths on this, um, primarily getting with uh, getting with our compatriots on long range planning and figuring that out. Um, I think round tables next on the uh, on the agenda. And just so everybody knows, um, anyone that wants to place items on the agenda, just get them to Martha or I, you know, a couple days before. Um, we'd be happy to have anything on there or, or new initiatives, um, you know, if, to the extent we have the capacity to, to take on something else besides, I think, some of the things that are coming out of that uh, market analysis, so, you know, I think we can, uh, we can help support and do stuff. Um, Dave, at some point, I think we should get the grant writers, um, meet with them again and go over the market analysis with them and see what they might have to, you know, yep. might have in mind as far as helping us with some of those action items and getting some funding for them. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the step after meeting with long range planning, right? Let's, exactly. Let, yep. Let's identify what the priorities are and then, um, you know, see what we can get uh, um, in terms of other other assistance. I mean, there's the other thing that's out there, and you know, I, I do. You know, there's we've gotten the town's gotten money from from Greenway before. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Some of the foundations are starting to look at funding along these lines for these types of things. I don't know if we can leverage something like the Wilson Foundation. They seem to have so much money they can't get it out the door, and they were they're supposed to spend all their money within within uh, ten years, and it's not it's not happening. So, um, you know, there maybe there's some additional ways to to integrate into the into that effort too. But I don't know. Yeah, Just didn't they do something about. in Niagara Falls? I, I Wasn't think that so. like yeah. yeah the Niagara Niagara Catholic or. Yeah, they were they were primarily supposed to just spend that money, um, you know, at LaSalle Park and some of the stuff in the city, some of the waterfront stuff in the city, and they just they just can't spend it all. So I don't know. Maybe maybe if their maybe their uh, portfolio shrunk like all of ours these last few months, but uh, maybe maybe that's not the case. But, that's right. you know, so. <laughs> but you know that stuff will tend to bounce back. So. Oh. I Fingers just, crossed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a question about the grant writers, just because I'm not, I haven't worked with them and don't know the process. In addition to helping write grants, 
are they also the ones that um, have their you know eyes and ears out for what's available, or do we have to sort of do our own legwork as well on that to see like what money's out there or what what to pursue? Well, Dave would probably answer this better than I can, but I can give you just a you know basic answer is that. Yes, we have to give them an idea of what we're looking for um, because there's, gosh, hundreds, if not thousands of different grants out there. Um, and they search for which ones we would qualify for. So, but we have to give them an idea of, you know, what we're trying to, to uh, accomplish. So Jen, would, would wouldn't we want to put together some sort of a job description of what it is we're looking for? And um, do we have a model? I don't know, Dave, I know you're a much bigger town out there, but there must be models for what an economic, what a competent uh, economic development consultant looks like. And I, and so we took a look at the action items and we, seems to me we need to build in the job description so when the grant writers are writing, they're writing a grant that's going to fund a person that's actually going to help us accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Well, from what I recall from years ago from the uh, grant we were, had talked about earlier is that there were specific um, a criteria, job criteria that the economic development person had. Is that right? Do I remember that correctly, Dave? Do you... Yeah, I mean, we so there was a program out there and the grant writer was specifically aware of it. And again, it was, I forget, it might have been Department of State, it might have been a different state agency. Um, but we had basically the city of Tonawanda's application, which really spelled out, you know, uh, you know, what, what the tasks and, and, um, and, and work program of that person would be. And it was pretty close to, I think, what we were looking um, to have and and work on on the island. I mean, obviously, we'd have we'd have specific things, but the you know the a lot of a lot of the same things the city of Tonawanda was looking at, right? They were concerned about their you know their their downtown um, you know town center commercial stuff. They're worried about enhancing uh, you know recreation and tourism opportunities. So I think those we there are examples out there that we can uh, that we should be able to pull from. Of other of other successful applications, and then just tailor it specifically to you know our work program and and what we think would be a would be a focus of that person. Um, you know, I, from a job description standpoint, I mean, I, I think that would then, uh, you know, that would generate the job description, right? If we have a series of tasks we want somebody to accomplish, um, and then we can figure out you know, what the, what the, per, what, you know, some of the minimum requirements on the, on the background and experience. But again, some of that is, some of that's tied into, um, you know, what, what ultimately is available for our funding and, and salary resources. So um, not that you want to necessarily compromise on things, but, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, somebody who's enthusiastic and a go-getter might be, might be something better than somebody that would have more experience, but maybe, you know, isn't, 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 is in a different place in their career or something. Right. So I think a lot of that is, is fluid. Yeah. I guess I would just like to see somebody really read over the marketing analysis that was done and get excited about that analysis and say, yeah, I want to do this. And um, I'm going to be a go-getter. I mean, I think you need somebody like that. You don't need a, and you may be right, Dave, we, the town of Wanda model is all right, but I think they should be well-versed in what our marketing analysis showed. Because I, I think we have a consensus that that analysis is darn good and is a great roadmap for us on Grand Island. That's all. Yep. I had one other item, Dave. You, you may be, maybe everybody's aware of it, but I've been, um, you're not aware that I'm with the Sierra Club and we help get the electric buses in the city of the NFTA is uh, going to purchase electric buses now. But I was talking to the uh, person from National Grid and some of you may know about this, but they have this program where you businesses can install um, 
charging stations and get about 90% of that paid for by Nash, National Grid. So I'm not here pushing for National Grid, but I'm just saying I have a plug-in car myself and I can get all over Grand Island without buying any gasoline. And I think that is the future. And I got a whole bunch of cards from National Grid here. I just don't know how to distribute those or get those out to our businesses because uh, it covers almost all the costs. And um, anybody has any ideas how we, you know, I, I, I went to our supervisor and he was gonna give them to Rhonda and I don't know what she was gonna do with them, but I think we need to aggressively like let people know in the business community that there's this program. That, that's all. So I got the cards. I don't know if anybody, and National Grid's excited about us doing this. Roger, I think you, I think you're right. Kind of future, right? I mean, now now you pull up to just about every every uh, retail establishment, and there's uh, you know online pickup lines and stuff like that, right? I'm uh, you know eventually we're going to have charging stations just all over the place. Um, you know, once once that starts to you know, replace and transition out, um, you know, gas, gas powered vehicles. So, yeah. Roger, not to suggest you do even more work than you already do, but if uh, you might want to get some of those cards to the, the chamber office. Well, I thought about that. Yeah. I and hope then... they don't just sit there on a desk. That's all I hope they, I mean, when, when Gusto did that article on our restaurants, I ran all over the town, you know, the chamber didn't seem interested in it, but I was excited about it. So I got them to the park, the different parks and to uh, the hotel, Express Hotel, all the hotels actually. So I think it's that kind of running around you got to do to make it happen. I guess I can talk to Eric or somebody knows Eric better than I. Uh, yeah. Be really yeah, I don't nice know when their next networking event is with all their with their members, they usually do something along those lines in the summertime. That would be a good time to hand those out and make them aware and. Yeah, so that, Roger, I don't know if there's like a website for that program, but if there is, we could send Rhonda the link and then I'm sure Rhonda could put something out on the, the town website. Um, just yeah, there, done for a lot of these other things. There is a website. I was thinking about getting an article in the dispatch on it too. I think Alice Gerard would write one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Does uh does National Grid have like a like a canned press release on it? Uh, I can find out. I have. And that would be something I'd have. I'd have Grid just send it over, right? I mean, they should. I they can, should have something on it. I mean, if this is a why a, a program that they're they're really uh, you know trying to push out there. And I hear that it's it, all this stuff's going back to the power utilities again. I think NYSERDA's transitioning to other stuff because they used to be the main funder of um, you know some of this uh, electric vehicle infrastructure. Well, it's the future. People are buying electric vehicles. That's all I have. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I think we skipped the in-person be virtual. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did skip that. We did. We did skip that. Thank you, Kristen. Sure. Um, so, when we were trying to figure out live versus remote. Um, Christian indicated that uh, the town's actually been having this discussion for their advisory committees because there's, you know, so many people are out of town or, you know, we still have, we do still have some issues, um, you know, with COVID and people's comfortable uh, or comfort level, um, you know, meeting in person and, you know, kind of close quarters and stuff and uh, some, some health and stuff like that. So, I don't think they've made a decision on it yet, but it sounds like we could remain remote or we might be able to go to a hybrid type model. Um, I always get concerned when uh, when the summertime hits, um, you know, kind of 
dragging her stuff away from the deck or something to go sit in town hall at seven o'clock on a 75 or 80 degree day is kind of always a, a difficult, uh, a difficult thing, but, um, you know, I'd be happy to, I, I think I put that on there as kind of a discussion point to get everybody's thoughts on, um, um, you know, whether we want to continue this way, some hybrid, I'm trying to think, and Jen, you might know this is kind of, because you used to drive that technology quite a bit. Is it, is it easy to kind of set up hybrid in, in the conference room if we wanted to have that option? Well, now that we are all familiar with Zoom and we can use Zoom, you could, you could set up something like that and Zoom. I'm just wondering, um, where's, the, where's the camera? Where would it just be the laptop on the end? Yeah, it would be a laptop. Okay. Unless they've tweaked something since then and have set it up to do, because I have seen where there are people at the conference table, and I'm not sure if there's multiple people on the TV screen or not, but um, that's one way to do it, is just do a Zoom conference with the laptop on the table. And, okay. And yeah, we'll we double. actually set up, since COVID, we now oh, have yeah, the conference room set up with the camera where we have a computer in the room that we can I can log right into. What Tech Advisory is doing um, is kind of similar where they're doing every either six months or four months, whatever it is, you know, maybe two times a year, they actually have an in-person and then the other ones are Zoom. We're still discussing that, but I'm kind of on the consensus that, you know, we have a lot of snowbirds, we have a lot of people here and kind of what we just said, right now it's 80 degrees out, it's beautiful. I don't think anybody wants to drive down to town hall and then, you know, spend their night there. So <clears throat> I kind of like the idea that tech had, you know, twice a year, we have a big in-person meeting you know, actually they chose, uh, we chose to go to Brick Oven after and just kind of talk about non, you know, tech advisory board stuff and get to know each other. It was a great time. So maybe something similar like that can happen or is what you guys are looking for. You're looking for people's thoughts. That sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm, great. I would prefer to stay on Zoom. Yeah, same I'm, here. I mean, I'm out of town a lot, so. This is much easier for me to participate. Yeah. So, I mean, we can even do maybe once a year, or maybe we don't do it at all, right? We just keep everything through Zoom. But I do think this board specifically has great value in remote. I don't think it's needed. You know, we're a zoning board. They have to go in and look over physical plans and, you know, make sure everything is spec within our town code. That I do see has value being in person. It needs to be in person where something like this, tech advisory, I think we're all, you know, through COVID, we've all kind of been trained where we, where we all function well. I don't think any of us would say that there's, you know, deterioration of quality over the last two years of having the meetings remote. Christian, no. I would also say, like, in terms of feedback to the, to the town board, there have been a couple of meetings that, like, I would have liked to attend, not, not our not our um, meetings, but like other advisory boards. And it's been nice to be able to like walk, go back and watch the video. Sure. Um, so um, I do think there, there's been really, that's that's definitely added value um, to have the recordings. Sure, and my pitch, we, we've, we actually only talked about it very, very briefly. Um, this is something we're gonna be talking about at our next meeting with the town board. But my goal is, you know, don't we want to entice more people to be active? So I think we are, you know, branding ourselves better and advertising better that, hey, you can join remotely instead of you need to be here, you know, physically. Um, I, I just think it will make, it will motivate more people to, you know, look at our advisory boards. We, we may get better quality, you know, candidates in the future for advisory boards if we offer remote Well, I agree. My, my main concern is health. They're talking about COVID spiking again in September. So we're, not, we're not out of the woods. And I got so many friends right now that I've gotten COVID. Thankfully, they've been vaccinated and had their booster shots. So they're surviving. But I, don't, I can, I, there's just scores of people I know. And I'm, I'm reluctant to even go to bigger meetings anymore in a, 
in a room, confined room because it, you're going to get it. I mean, it's really spiking again. So. so let's stay on Zoom and we'll kick the can down the road. And at some point we want to get together, we will. Yeah, I like uh, I like Christian's idea. Maybe we uh, we do a meeting slash social thing and we try and coordinate it. You know, yeah, I mean, even if sure. it's once a year, just one time yeah. we get to meet, it doesn't, and again, we don't have to, we can still offer the, mm -hmm. you know, remote opportunity. And again, it can oh just God. kind of be a ad hoc, you know, maybe if we start losing members or if we feel there's a disconnect, you know, of what we're discussing, we can say, hey, maybe it's best we have that, you know, once a year meeting, next meeting, or in two like, months, uh, whatever it is. I like that. We had another board I'm on, I'm on the... Um... Seneca Iroquois National Museum Board. We meet monthly, um, hybrid, and then we have our annual meeting next month, where it's in it's in person, but it's more detailed. It's in the it's in the bylaws of uh, you know just approving things and things like that. Another board I'm on uh, quarterly meetings, you know, a hybrid, and then they meet once once a year, maybe twice, you know. So it's um, I like the what you said there, Christian. I, I agree with that. Great. So I'll take the feedback that I feel there's a general consensus from the EDAB here that, you know, we appreciate remote and we don't have any desire to move to a hundred percent full, you know, mm -hmm. in-person type of type of meeting. And as I said, we, we discussed it only briefly. And uh, I, I believe the verbiage, what we're going to be looking to do again, don't hold me to this is it's going to be at the discretion of either the, the board itself or the liaison to the board. Um, but I don't, Think there's any need that this becomes 100% physical um, uh, type, type of meeting. So I, I think how it's been, you know, I'm only a couple months into the role, but I, I haven't heard any feedback that this isn't working. So okay, there's nothing else for the cause. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Have a good night, everyone. Second. 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 All in favor? All in favor. Drew, jumping, jumping. <laughs> All right. Welcome again.